I'm trying to like figure out a way to light, but um, like I'm in an interrogation room, which I technically am. You guys are interrogating me. I don't know what I'm supposed to. Do. Okay, that will that will maybe do. All right, let me just grab my coffee. I'll be I'll be right with you. I'll be right with you. Okay, so the point the point of this um. I get a lot of questions, questions about this, and also it's like a year since it's been published, almost to the day. That might be a lie, but it's on the internet, so you have to believe me. Um, okay, I'm getting my coffee for real this time, one second. Anyway, I asked someone to, I asked on Instagram uh, if people have questions, because a lot of people have questions, because not many people uh, make, make a book that exposes them at such a just despicable level uh, that people just want to know what's wrong with me. So um, I'm going to try and answer some of that. Um, apologies for the quality of this video, uh, but not really. Um, start a GoFundMe, I guess. God, I'm exhausted. Okay. I'm going to just answer them all and then I'm going to cut the ones that aren't interesting. If I have time, I'll put like an end of video gag right here. <laughs> okay. Was there anything you thought about omitting or did omit? Yes. Yes, there was. Uh, there were times when, uh, cause this book, for those of you who don't know, which I assume you will do know, uh, this book was about six months of my life. Obviously this included other people and I didn't want to, the book was about me and my delusions and my borderline insanity. And I didn't want to like, you know, expose too much of other people um, because I just felt that it's not really my place. I included what, what needed to be included for the plot, but like there was a lot that wasn't in there that if I was, you know, that I, I wanted to on a like personal level just to like make more sense of things. But at the same time, you know, I can't, um, it didn't feel, didn't feel right really. Um, so yeah. Uh, how did you decide what animals to represent people as? It, it depended. Uh, so with Izzy, for example, she has blue hair. This is her joke. She has blue hair and she's a tit. So she's a blue tit. I, I know. So um, that was that was her reason. Uh, the other one that, that gets asked is like the cat guy. I just thought he looked like a cat. I mean, I said it in the book, like during the acid trip scene, I was just like, damn, this guy's just a cat, like straight up. Um, other people, it really depended like, Kieran Gillen, uh, bless him, I put as a parrot because if you've met Kieran, he, he, he knows how to talk. That is just as simple as, I don't think he looks like a parrot. I was just like, hey, <laughs> parrot man, you know? Um, some of the others, like sometimes it would be like, a lot of the time it was just what animal was easiest to draw in that moment. Especially if there was like crowds and stuff. I, I you know, I was drawing those pages really fast and um, I just didn't you know, fancy drawing complicated animals or animals I didn't know how to draw. So they were all often like very like s simple. So a lot of the time there wasn't even any reason or rhyme behind it. It just, you know, I'm just a lazy bastard. Um, does the fact that your auto bio is arguably your most recognizable work you made affect your approach to future projects? Any pressure to make them as personal slash deep? This is a really good question. And this is like, this terrifies me a little bit. Um, yeah, so I, the project I'm working on right now, um, <laughs> I'm working on Hackslash, uh, Tim Seeley's project, which is uh, like a very gory, you know, kind of cheesy horror, you know, just horror thing. <laughs> that was a terrible way of explaining. I'm not selling it very well. I'm so sorry, but it's very like opposite of what it certainly was. And um, so I, I decided to take that project because it's like, this seems so outside of what I did last. And I don't want to get caught up in doing one thing or being like kind of stereotyped as, you know, the one trick pony sort of thing, which I don't think I am because I think my projects have already been so varied, but, um, you know, I wanted to, to make sure that people knew that this wasn't going to be all I do, which I want, I do want to, I do want to do more auto bio stuff and more in that vein, but, um, it takes a lot out of me, you know, it takes a lot out of me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do feel pressure. I do feel the pressure, but I'm hoping to just relieve that instantly by being like, nope, I'm doing lots of other stuff. You guys might not like this and that's cool. I want to do what I want to do, you know, ultimately, like I said, like I'm a selfish artist, I'll do whatever I do. And if, if people like it, that's cool. And if not, then I'll starve. 
Um, <laughs> how do you know you've made it? I don't know, tell me when you get there. Uh, how did you decide which style suited which section? No, never seen so many styles in a book. It really just, and this is a really wanky answer, um, but it really just came from whatever I felt on the day or whatever. I mean, I think I speak, my, my way of communicating is obviously not like this. You could probably tell. Um, I am, I feel like I am a communicator through, you know, words and pictures and, um, so I think there wasn't really much thought that went into like what style is it going to be drawn in or how am I going to communicate this because it just kind of came so naturally to me like it just felt like this organic thing I mean even throughout those six months um that the book was based off I was thinking like I was almost it got to the point where I was seeing things in panels which was a little strange and a little disconcerting but um, <laughs> you know I, like this how I was kind of how I was interacting with the world at that point so it didn't really not really a lot of thought went into it. Uh, the theme of the striped tea is intriguing, just a metaphor or literal, or am I crazy? This, I am so glad uh, I get to talk about this. The striped t-shirt is actually probably one of my proudest, like, oh my God, I made coffee and then I'm not drinking it. Disgusting. The striped t-shirt, uh, I was really proud of this. Uh, I was really proud of it. It's because um, a lot of main characters, especially in animation or in comics wear stripes because it stands out on a page you know like it's instantly like black and white stripes your eye is drawn to it so my character of zoe was wearing a striped black and white t-shirt because i'm the main character uh it's as basic as that but i was very proud of it um which is why at the end spoilers um with the the whole kind of like you know, taking that t-shirt off and putting on a plain white one, that was that was a metaphor for being like, dude, I'm not the main character. Like, no one is. I am just this blank canvas, um, you know. I could have thought of a way more pretentious way to have worded that, but I don't have the time right now. But anyway, that's like, that's the, that's the, that's the gist. Um, I just started it, but I'm curious about the design process inspo for the animal people. Okay, I already answered that. Uh, you portray yourself using multiple characters in it slowly. What do they represent? Okay, so um, some people, a lot of people think that this is like current Zoe, this is child Zoe, this is teen Zoe, which is not quite how I saw it. This is, I mean, I do call this little chibi one, the child, cause she's kind of like, they all basically represent different parts of my, my nature. Um, and I decided to do that because I didn't want the book to just be one big monologue so I thought that it would be way more fun if I had different parts of my character like my character that could argue and that could interact and you know it would provide comedic relief and it would just it just open up so much more so which is why I decided to do it um this is the child and she is the kind of like the very idealistic view I have of the world she is the, the very delusional optimistic I'm gonna fall in love and be happy forever and I'm gonna like, I love dancing and just being silly and very like, she's very like overly, and I, I think I, that's a big part, my personality I think is, like everybody's is quite complicated because I have this part of me and then I have this, I have kind of my more like my complete cynicism and my like, you know, I'm embarrassing, everything I do is cringe, um, you know, this is the, this is the, I'm cringe and this is the anti-cringe, you know, it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know, um, obviously this is, this is depression, um, and, uh, trauma, I guess, and just all of those things kind of mold into one, I wouldn't quite say it's just depression, but I mean, it's, you know, the, the darkness that follows, if you will, uh, this guy, I, I always, this guy is, is, is so funny to me that I put this in a book, because this guy I've been drawing since I was like 16, it was what I would use, I was, it was when I was really inspired by David Shrigley, who uh, paints these, I mean, they're giant paintings, but they're like very simple, like cartoon drawings, and they're always very funny and just very bizarre. Anyway, I was really inspired by that as a teenager and um, created this character just to like express various jokes. It was like, it was when I was in college and if I just wanted to make my friends laugh or whatever, I would just draw this little guy saying dumb stuff. But eventually I think it became this weird, way for me to express feelings in a very quick way um anyway and, and he i just put him in there because i feel like he's my alter ego at this point 
Um, and it's also funny because he's the only character that I refer to with male pronouns, which is really bizarre because it's me, right? Um, which I don't know, do some digging about that if you will. But um, yeah, that's, that's the guys, that's the dudes. <laughs> Um, which part of It's Lonely was the hardest to write? Which part made you the happiest? Oh God, okay, so the part of It's Lonely that was hardest to write was definitely the parts with my family, um, especially my mum uh, and her her issues. Because um, I think this is, it's, it's, it's complicated and it's stuff that I don't feel like in my own life is resolved. I imagine they'll be watching this, but I feel like it's uh, there's just a lot of stuff there that's quite complicated and and again dealing with other people that aren't me and so it just becomes this thing that's larger than the book and it became really difficult to write about for, for a number of reasons but yeah that was definitely the hardest part uh, which part made you the happiest um either the parts where i was a child uh or actually the part the bit at the end when Spoilers when young Zoe talks to current Zoe. I that was such a cathartic thing for me to do and I that's what the whole book ultimately was for was that one scene. Um and I think when I was working on the book and when I was doing all the really depressing pages, I kept thinking about that because I was like, this is what I'm doing it for. This is ultimately what the book is. Uh even that or the, the acid trip scene, because I mean that was just so fun to fun to make. Um, and ultimately was a, is a very happy memory that I have, for better or worse. <laughs> um, uh, I've answered these questions on another video, so I'm not going to do that. Before you started, what got you to what got you the idea or drive to start? So I made this book because I was in a weird place. I had just been dumped and I was in the middle of a complete just depressive phase and I didn't really know what I was doing with my life. I just moved out of my parents like permanently and yeah my, my long distance boyfriend suddenly left me and I was like just in a state. Um, and I was dancing around my kitchen listening to Happy Together by the Turtles and I was like this is so funny of me. Like I am just like crying and screaming but i'm like yeah! <laughs> and um so i i drew that image wow my hair hi um i drew that image like on that day which ultimately became the cover this was me dancing around my kitchen wanting to kill myself um <laughs> and uh yeah i i kind of from that i just started it. i came up with a title on that day as well and um it just yeah it happened it just came from that and i i didn't expect it to be published it never meant to be a book it, it just i just needed a place to put my feelings because i was just feeling like absolutely just like inconsolable um so yeah that was the drive that was the drive i wanted to die and then i made a book it's like this why i mean tangent time but it's it's funny when people uh some people who really dislike the book will say why does this this woman think that she is important or interesting enough to have a book about her it's like i don't in my opinion, everybody is important enough to have a book about them, but that's besides the point. I made the book for myself and it ended up getting printed because enough people were interested and, you know, I made it, right? Uh, never once did I make the book to, to be like, I'm so special. I am the most special being there ever was. I have not for one second believed that. And I think the book, if you, you read it, probably shows that. I, I, I don't know. Um, it was just therapy, that's all it was. It was therapy and it was just a way for me to express myself or put my things so I, you know, didn't do anything silly. That's ultimately all it is. Anyways. Hey, yay, yay! Uh, were you ever scared to be so vulnerable with the world considering stigmas? Uh, no, I wasn't. Because this is the thing, uh, and this is why I don't feel ashamed of anything in the book, because ultimately I am me regardless. If the book exists or not, if people know about me or not, I am me. I can't be anything else. And if people are going to dislike me, they're going to dislike me anyway, you know? Like, so I didn't feel uh, bad about sharing anything, because I was just, you know, I'm, I'm stuck living as this being, you know, no matter what, there's no changing. Um, if that makes sense. So no, not not really. Although um, 
there was a few times where my book, where news about my book went kind of viral and I would stupidly read the comments and you're just kind of reminded of how cruel the world is and how uh, people lack so much compassion and empathy and it's, it is it is upsetting and I think it upset people on various spectrums. I think that it, um, which was quite interesting and I would love to talk about, well, if I do a follow-up to this book, which I think I, I'm going to, um, I'm going to talk about that more because I, I find it really interesting, different people's reaction, different people from different backgrounds and situations being upset about various different things in the book. And it, it, I find that very, very interesting. Um, I can't remember what I was, what I was, yeah, anyways, the world is quite cruel, uh, but you know what, the support has been overwhelming, so I'm, you know, it obviously counteracts. But there are times where I see a comment where I'm like, damn, damn, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Uh, is it hard or painful to reflect back on where you were mentally and emotionally during the book? Um, y yes and no, because I think I'm I'm so used to feeling certain kinds of ways at this point that it doesn't really um, doesn't really affect me that much. I mean, there are parts. There are there are parts. There are situations that happen in the book. There are you know certain ideas that I do think about, and I'm like. <laughs> but um you know on the whole i mean i wasn't fi after making the book i wasn't fixed i certainly felt better i certainly have um enjoyed the community that i think that i feel now um but i'm still the same i'm still the same person you know so these feelings don't you know seem foreign to me um anyways is there anything too personal that you're not willing to depict in your autobio comics? Yeah, I think there are, well, I don't know if per too personal, but there are definitely things that have happened in my life that I just wouldn't include. Um, cause I don't have anything to say about them. I think there are, the thing is, there was a lot of people, um, also who read the book who were kind of like, you know, my life's way worse than hers, or she hasn't gone through any suffering. It's like, this isn't a book of, I don't want to just make a book that's like, woe is me, here are all the bad things that have ever happened in my life, you know, th that's not what the book was, the book was about, you know, ultimately, like I said, I, I believe, if I'm analysing my own work here, I believe that the book became less autobiographical and became more about an artist who was falling into this kind of cycle of, you know, suffering for content almost or I, I i don't know how to i think honestly i didn't answer this one very well but i think what i was trying to say it was kind of about it became you know it became this more fictional story of a real person kind of intertwining with this fictional version of themselves that wasn't even an idealistic version it was just this version that was just kind of spawned from a need to create something and creating content or something like that i this is a hard question to answer and i like in my head it's like i'm like galaxy brained like fucking profound ass thoughts but then it comes out and it's like oh anyway continue the, the the way i worded it in the scene where i'm talking to the cat guy on the couch after the acid trip and i'm like talking about how like you know we can create create all this 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 you know depression porn and people eat it up and we get to like do this that it's a career and it like keeps us you know it makes us money it's a business you know i ultimately it became more about that i think and more about kind of how like my my loneliness and my kind of otherness that I had built for myself. I, I had decided that I didn't fit with society. So I was this outsider, right? And I think ultimately that's what it became about was about me kind of trying to deconstruct that and trying to be like, you know, kind of like I'm, um, you know, like nerds when they grow up and they become really bitter uh, I think that's me. I think ultimately that's me. And I think <laughs> that the book can kind of just be condensed down to that. Um, yeah. How much of that story is you? I mean, like, like I just said, it's, it's, it is, but it also is. And I think it became so disconnected that it became more about character and more about trying to express ideas, using things that had happened to me and using my life. Um, it's all like, it's funny because obviously my, the auto bios, as a whole, like, autobiographical art, no matter what the medium, is somebody's perception of self, somebody's own perception of self, which is 
pretty unreliable. I mean, it completely depends on, on your level of ego. I know people who make autobiographical work that makes them seem so much more horrible and, and just despicable than they are. And I've also met people who make autobiographical work where they are the perfect hero that does nothing wrong and everyone around them is the villain, right? So it's like, I think there's a spectrum and I think that everybody is wrong. <laughs> I think that we there is no possible way to create a true autobiographical piece of art. I don't think it's possible. So there we go. Uh, please make a video of how to get started in publishing. I made a video a year ago, two years ago, that was, I think, probably answered these, these questions, but I do need to make an update, but you know, check out the the old one for that. What's it like getting so much extra attention since the release? Does a part of you wish it was gradual? Okay, so it happened, yeah. It was quite intense. Uh, we're on our fourth print run now and it's been out for a year. Um, no, it's not, no, it hasn't. I submitted the pages in September. Whatever, it's been out for an amount of time. Um, yeah, the, the, the whole, yeah, okay. It was weird for me. It was weird for me. It still is weird for me. I think that like, you know, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave this question. Fuck this question. But during the process of making it, did you ever feel like your emotions weren't valid? Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there, there is a thing about depression that I sh think, okay. Having depression makes me feel guilty a lot of the time because although, you know, my life hasn't been sunshines and rainbows and I have worked really fucking hard, I look around and I'm like, damn, like, I have no right to be depressed, which is bullshit because depression isn't about the situation that you're surrounded in. It's it's the chemicals in your brain, okay? And so it's like, I, I even if I was the richest, most successful, most loved person on the planet, I feel like I would still be depressed. I think I would. I, I think I would, maybe they, some things would be relieved, you know, a little bit. Like I would, who knows? I, I don't know, but I, my, 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 my theory is that, you know, it's, um, I would feel the same. Um, so yeah, there were times when like, yeah, it became difficult to talk about because um, people obviously misunderstand a lot of the time. If you say that you have depression, it's like, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong with your life? It's like, no, that's not. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I think that's due a whole nother video, to be honest. Was there a moment when you realized you weren't as nervous during booths and panels? Yeah. Okay, so in my, <laughs> it's funny actually thinking back. So uh, in my book, I go to Thought Bubble Comic Con. It was my first time at a con that I was, you know, displaying my work or, you know, whatever, selling. Um, and I, I look back at it now and I'm like, damn, I was, I, I remember, I remember how I felt. I remember being shit scared. I was fucking terrified. Whereas now, I mean, I get anxiety still, but I can manage cons pretty fine. I enjoy them, you know? I think I, I do get overwhelmed and, um, you know, it can be, it is challenging, but I enjoy them. Um, so, you know, progress, character development, it is possible. You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> How are you different now? I think that I have accepted some parts of myself. I think I have accepted that I uh, needed to stop what I was, what the, the path that I was going down, which was the path of uh, a misanthropic, is that how you pronounce that word? Kind of, um, you know, joker ass <laughs> like, um, you know I, I kind of I think that I, I, I lean into that stuff way too easily sometimes I think I can really become this very very nihilistic person and uh, I think I have to fight to not be that um, and uh, I think I've done a good job I think I have 100% done a good job I have, and I've also accepted things that happened in the past that I was struggling with because of the book um, but also I know that there are some parts of me that don't change, like my depression, like my idealistic kind of ideas of, um, you know, what love is and kind of what, you know, 
how beautiful the world and art can be, you know? I think that some of this stuff is always going to be there, even though I know that there is... These, the ideas that I have are flawed and false. I think that that's just how I am, you know? That's, how my, that's just how I'm kind of wired, unfortunately. <laughs> What's the reason you included the VR chat scene, listening to Ugandan Knuckles? Okay, so that scene is probably one of my favorite scenes in the book. I, uh, I love that scene. Um, and that was something that did happen. Uh, I went into VR chat and there was this kid talking about how him and his girlfriend had this kid when they were really young and he was just talking about his struggles and about, but ultimately how, you know, how happy he, he is and how blessed he feels. Um, but, you know, he, he wasn't sugarcoating things and he was just talking about, you know, regrets and, but also just kind of, it was just this moment where I just was just listening to someone else. I think I included it because story wise, I included it because that's the whole, the whole point was the whole book had been about me. And towards the end, I'm just listening to somebody, a stranger through an avatar, just talking wholeheartedly about his life and his experience. And I think that was just kind of a, you know, listen, listen, <laughs> you know, moment. Um, that's why it was included. Uh, was Doki Doki the main game that inspired this book or were there others? So Doki Doki was one of the main inspirations for the book, which is quite funny because I'm not sure. I don't know how much, well, I, yeah, okay. I think I think maybe a lot of it did show through if you've played Doki Doki Literature Club. I don't want to spoil it because it's like the best horror game ever made. Um, but um, it's very like fourth wall breaking and stuff. Um, and it just did it in ways that like only a video game could do. And so like, I definitely took inspiration from it from, you know, a kind of perspective of, I want to break the fourth wall in a way that only comics can do. And also I, I just love like the final scene in, in, in Doki Doki, I think a lot of it was inspired by that and kind of, I related to that character a lot and kind of um, her kind of idealistic ways of thinking and also her kind of slightly, slightly psychotic, very psychotic ways of thinking. I'm not, I'm not like that, you know, don't, <laughs> but relatable nonetheless. Why are you so funny though, grew up ugly? Do you find success messing with your creativity or is it more being? No, it's messing with it. It's messing with it so bad. So, okay, not that I'm, I don't want to say I'm successful, but like, I, yeah, okay, fuck. I'm, there's no way to word this without sounding even too like, you know, fuck. Um, yeah, I think like I, I have found success the past year or so. Um, and it is uh, not fun um, because yeah, it, it it's, there are so many more people to disappoint now. You understand? And like having a book that's like <laughs> a bit silly, it's like, what does she do next? Dog, like, I just want to make shit, you know? Um, <laughs> sorry, that sounded so aggressive, but it's, it's one of those things like I'm definitely wrestling with right now. And it's been one of my biggest issues the past year is like, um, I just want to make stuff that seems fun to me and I don't want to have any expectations. Expectations are terrifying. Um, you know, it's like suddenly I'm like a 10 year old trying to impress her parents at sports day or whatever. And just, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back to the egg and spoon race. <laughs> How did you settle on the visual representation that you use for depression? Um, so, okay, so Happy is his name. He's not, Happy's not like, he doesn't have a name in the book, but his name is Happy, he's the guy. He actually started as, a, let me, let me get it for you. Let me, let me show you. He started as a little figure. Um, I was, this was when I was drawing brain and I was like, when at the end of the day, when I didn't want to look at comics anymore, I want to do something else that was creative. So I picked up like clay. This is like one of the first ones I made, so it's not great. But um, I made this and um, look at him. You can, you can tell it's him. Um, but yeah, I made this guy and uh, he, yeah, he slowly, he, he's definitely evolved like since this model, but that's like, that was the starting point for him. And uh, I just thought like, it's just a funky design. It's a cool design. And um, yeah, I just decided that was gonna be my, my, my depression design. It was, which was very inspired by, um, I know people think it's uh, inspired by, is it Nia? Is that how you pronounce it? Um, which it actually isn't. I know it looks a lot like that, but it actually wasn't. It was inspired by uh, characters in, in Pathologic, which is, a very, I don't know many people who know that game, but um, it was very inspired by a character in that. And also the, uh, like the, the sun and the moon from, um, oh my God, Soul Eater, is that what it's called? 
The anime? Yeah, Soul Eater. Okay. Um, it was very inspired by Soul, <laughs> Soul Eater. Anyway. Thanks for putting me on open book. Did you have to get that song okay for copyright? Less said about that, the better. Do you have a music playlist for its own extent of the earth? I do! And it's like the most whiplash-inducing thing you've ever heard in your life. Um, it really just kind of goes all over the place. Because I, I mean, I, the music I listen to is all over the place. I like, I think I'm not really like a genre gal. I'm just like, if this song slaps or if the lyrics interest me, I enjoy it, you know? I think there's some music that I listen to that sounds like shit. Um, but I, I can relate to the lyrics, so I enjoy it. I also think I listen to some, like there's some types of music that just like stimulate my brain in a certain way, but the lyrics are like, oh God, you know? So it's like, I, my music's all over the place. But anyways, for yeah, it's lonely. I, ha I did have a playlist uh, and it's very chaotic. I was gonna share it, but then I, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> so I haven't. Uh, how much rewriting slash editing occurred? None. None. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> What's it like being the president of comics? Fine. Would you make another autobiographic novel? Yes, uh, I think I answered this earlier, but yeah, I, I want it to be a trilogy, actually. I have a plan, I have a big plan, actually, uh, but it's just kind of gonna happen when it happens. Uh, the second one I want to be called is Crowded at the Center of the Earth, and um, I have ideas, but you know, I got other shit to do and I'm not really like in the space to be doing it right now and I haven't also haven't like lived enough life yet since the last one came out that I can like justify you know what I mean like I have to I have to wait for like something tragic to happen <laughs> has the whole this is so relatable thing that you talked about in the book got more tolerable I okay so this is interesting because I think people really misinterpreted uh that scene it wasn't a hatred of when when people call my work relatable or call me relatable I get it I get it you know, it, it's it's more that for, for me, at least at the time, it was, I was feeling so alienated by everyone around me and the world in general. So when people come up to you in a public setting and it's like a large quantity of people telling you how like them, you know, you are, it's like, it it's like this just conflicting, just feeling. And um, I was really struggling with it at the time, right? Whereas, whereas now it's, it's, I get it, dude. I'm relatable as fuck. What was the pitch like? How far into making it were you? So I wasn't really. So the pitch that I sent to Image was very much the cover um, and some interior pages that I had done that weren't. So, because I didn't. The book was not made in order. Uh, so my pitch pages were like pages that, like, wait, where are they? Like these two pages were in my pitch because I did them really early on because that was actually just like a standalone kind of comic that I put online, which a lot of them were, like a lot of the pitch pages were standalone uh, mini comics because uh, I wasn't planning on it being a book. So like this this page where I'm doing the interview um, with, about Billy and I kind of merge into her, like that was also in the pitch because that was kind of like online pages. Um, so there wasn't like that, the pitch, didn't include, include that much stuff actually. It was just basically like, here's some crazy pages. Um, here's a kind of like vague outline. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Publish it please. And then the image were like, damn bitch, you crazy, we'll take it. Um, that was the exact email I got by the way. Uh, for your friends and family in the story, did you ask if they were okay with what you included about them? Yeah, I did. I asked permission from everybody who was like included major, obviously like side characters. I, I didn't cause like, it's not whatever but anyone who was like included in a, in a major way yeah i also offered everybody if they wanted to read it before it was published but everybody was like nah so um yeah everybody was like yeah permission what breed was the abused dog it was like i think it was like a chihuahua mix like it would like looked kind of like a chihuahua but it was like bigger than a chihuahua it was kind of like short haired um some people thought that like that whole bit was made up, like the dog didn't exist, but the dog definitely did exist. Like everything to do with that dog was like 100% true to life. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was like some chihuahua thing. <laughs> Poor guy. Louis, what is the meaning of life? Being a little silly. Handling the secondhand trauma from fans who've connected with your work. Yeah, this is a weird one. So at conventions, I'll have people sharing their experiences with me and which I, I enjoy it feels like it's connection but it is uh like after like a day of it or like after a few hours of it like from like you know 
large quantities of people, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, not that like this is me saying don't talk to me about stuff because genuinely it's um, it, it's very. I want to say heartwarming, but a lot of the stuff is very like depressing. But like you know what I mean? It's like very like you know. You understand? Um, but yeah, it can be quite a lot. Um, but ultimately, it's a good thing, and I enjoy it. I just get like a little overwhelmed sometimes, and I feel like I'm not. Why am I doing an accent? Shit, fuck off. <laughs> and I feel like I'm not being like as engaged as I should be, you know. And then I just feel bad. Uh, but yeah. What was your output per week? page wise while making it so i would try and do two pages a day sometimes i would do three sometimes i would do one it just like completely depended on you know what was on the page um and how sad i was who will play you in the live action remake of it's lonely i don't know and i don't care but if a f movie did get made of it uh i would want like a lot of it to be animated like with like a lot of different animated arts like art styles because i think the 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 one of the things about it's only was like it used the medium and it used all these different styles so it's like if it was a movie you would need that too you would need all the different styles and so you need like lots of different types of like animation things like i can i can see that like that'd be so cool like one of the zoe's could be 2d one of them could be 3d one of them could be stop motion you know what i mean like i see also like um main zoe being live action i see like the characters like the other characters like the animal characters being live action but with like animated heads like drawn over like their actual faces like wouldn't that be cool i don't know i think that's a cool idea maybe not <laughs> whatever do you think the things you struggled with got better with just time no i'm not a kind of i don't believe in time healing i i don't uh, i think time like makes you like removed from things but i don't think time heals i this sounds so cheesy but i think that art heals art heals me personally i um sounds so annoying but like yeah I, I i think that my things got better for me when i start expressing myself in in ways that i could understand and communicate um and that to me is art you know that's up to other people that's other things that's like gardening or talking to someone to me it's you know creating something yeah uh, how did you record each moment for It's Lonely before drawing it? I have a note page on my phone where I was like writing down. So if like somebody said a certain line to me, I would be like, sorry, can you say that again? No reason, just. <laughs> um, I would just write stuff down that I felt was like, you know, uh, would be important or I could do something interesting with. A lot of it was just kind of based on my memory though, which is like obviously quite terrifying, although I think I was, I, I have a very good memory. So I think I, I think I did okay with that. But um, yeah, I would record, I would record stuff or I do little doodles. Yo. What was your main focus when designing Happy? What did you most want to bring across? So um, I wanted him to look kind of goofy. Like I wanted him to look scary, but like goofy. Like he's like, cause I think throughout the book he becomes less threatening. And I think that like, I wanted him to be this kind of like, cause I've accepted that happy is always going to be with me, right? Like that's kind of, that's how it is. I didn't want him to be like this. I wanted him to be this kind of figure that you could kind of dampen. Does that make sense? Like I wanted him to look kind of like this ominous presence, but as you go through this book and get to know him more, you're kind of like, this This guy's kind of goofy, <laughs> you know, he's kind of a silly guy. Um, and so I think that wanted to come across with like this, the eyes kind of pointing in the wrong direction, but like the smile's kind of scary, but um, you know, and he's kind of, he's kind of chunky looking, he's like, kind of like, you know, he's, he's not, he hasn't got like a scary form to him, he just looks a bit uncanny, which I think was the most important part was he looked uncanny and unsettling, but in a way that the more time you spent around him, the more that kind of you know, lessened. You British, no? If you were gonna write a follow-up, how would it be? So I think I have ideas for It's Crowded at the Center of the Earth, which will be the second book. I don't know when I'm gonna do it, but um, I, it's, it's, it's gonna be, uh, obviously it will be different because it's using what happened after It's Lonely and kind of how that book, how the, the, the release of that book affected me quite mon monumentous, monumentally? That might be a word, might not, don't know, professional author by the way. Um, so there's al there's already like a lot of like things that I, I can do with that, I think. And also 
I want it to be less about me. Um, it's obviously like gonna be from my perspective still, but I want it to focus more on other people in my life and kind of their, uh, you know, this is, whatever. I have so many ideas and it's gonna be great, okay? Don't worry about it. I noticed in the original art, there was a lot of blank spots. How did you fill those up in post? So with the original art for it's learning, which I don't have because I sold them, um, there was, cause there was a lot of panels. There was a lot of pages that had 12 panels on. And a lot of those panels would be, uh, there would be like the same thing happening with only a slight change in the next panel. Uh, but I draw by hand. So obviously I can't just like copy paste like digitally or whatever. So I would just draw, draw, you know, the panel. So it'd be like a train station with somebody stood there and the next panel, they would just turn their head. I wouldn't draw the train station again. I would just draw the turned head like by itself. And then uh, when I scan my pages, I put them in Clip Studio Paint and then I would just copy paste the background and then like erase the head on the previous panel and you know, just made it faster. You know, I don't want to draw like a train station twice if I don't have to, like that sucks. In the last page, I remember a pigeon or another bird blocking the last word. What was it? Just curious. I have been, okay, so the, the last panel, I, this was one of the things that I did actually end up thinking about a lot and it did change several times. Um, there was originally a uh, text there without the pigeon. Uh, then there was just one word, then there was a pigeon uh, that I covered it with. And uh, I kind of like that it's ambiguous, but yeah, there was, there is text there. You just can't see it ever. <laughs> so I just think that's fun. Like for me personally, I think that's really fun. Probably for nobody else, but I enjoy that. Uh, I should have mentioned that the point of that, the point of the pigeon, Covering the last thing I had to say was like, it doesn't matter what I have to say, like, fuck off, move on with your life, go outside. Your family hasn't seen you in three days. You have like seven mugs in your room. Anyway, that's it. It probably just says piss or something, you know? How do people react to being depicted in your story? Uh, generally speaking, quite well. Um, I think Izzy probably had the most enjoyment out of it. I watched her read it on my couch and... Uh, I think she kind of dug it. I think that, I mean, we, we obviously joked about it throughout the book. We joked about it in real life, hence why it was in the book. But um, I think I think that she had probably the most, the best reaction. I think that, um, you know, my parents struggled with some of it. Uh, I think that they, I mean, they're, I, I don't want to talk on their feelings, uh, really. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Tis what it is. Uh, what's your favorite Gemma Collins quote? I'm claustrophobic, Darren! It's the best one. Uh, how do you deal with lonely and loneliness now? Uh, better than I did, but ultimately like still not great. I, but I have been doing things. I've been doing loads of cons. I started theater. I've been like, you know, I still, I mean, I, I live alone. I work in this flat, you know, it's it definitely at times I'm like, I'm right back there, you know, but uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to get out more. I'm trying to be more of a person, which is a process in itself. And I'm not there yet at all, but um, you know, I'm trying my best. Have you rethought setting up a pension? No, no mother, I haven't. Which panel is your favorite out of pure curiosity? I think, um, I think I can answer this. I think I can answer this one quite fast. If I can find it, if I can find it. If I can find it. <laughs> it is definitely, okay, it's kind of, okay, this one. Where little Zoe smacks me across the face with her art portfolio that has like anime drawings and stuff. Uh, love that panel. Love that panel too much. Makes me had you see my little smile there, you see my little smile, I love it. <laughs> Which was your favourite Zoe to draw? Definitely the chibi one, uh, cause I love her. And if I, if the world was a kind of place, I like to think I would be her all the time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Did you think such a personal and specific work would have the widespread response it has gotten? No, but also yes, because I think that so many people experience things the way that I have because I think we are all so much more like the same than we think we are um we are all NPCs and I think that it makes sense that a book like this got popular because uh I just kind of just said it the, the, the way that I feel 
and uh, I think that a lot of people uh, have like a level of like restraint and also uh, shame, <laughs> like a healthy level of shame, whereas I don't. Uh, so I think that it was kind of like people found it cathartic to read it through me because it's like, oh, thank God I don't have to do this, but this like dumb bitch did. Uh, I just take one for the team, you know, guys, I took one for the team uh, and, uh, you know, it, it sold well. So it's, it's a good, it's a mutual benefit. <laughs> Has your book changed any relationships you had with people after they read it? understand me a lot better now. I think people think like my weirdness, like... Calm down! Um, I think that people um, read it and they're like, oh, because like a lot of times people think that I'm very cold and unfriendly, which I can understand why, but I think people read the book, they're like, oh, she's not cold and unfriendly. She's just like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, anyway, yeah. How has it been reading negative comments and reviews? Is it different because it's personal? I think it's a different feeling. Yeah, for sure. It's like, it's a different feeling, but it's no more neg- Like, it, it doesn't make me feel any worse or, you know, whatever, than if I was reading a bad comment about Billy or something. I think that like, I would feel, I feel the same level of like, ah, but um, it's definitely different. It's definitely like, but it's nothing that I didn't already know, you know? I think a lot of the personal, like, the comments that have affected me have been personal attacks on my character, which I can understand. This is the thing, it's like, I didn't, you know, the book is, is you know, it's just me, it's warts and all, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I would like to know the lives of these perfect people um, that have never done any wrong in their life, but, um, you know, I expected, I expected it, you know, so it is what it is. It makes me a little sad. Makes me do a little cry sometimes, but uh, on the whole, whatever. <laughs> Can you talk about your depiction of music as flat color in Billy and again in It's Lonely? Um, yeah, so I, the one thing that really bothers me about comics is there is no audio. And um, I'm trying to always find ways to, I think that like, I, dude, I, this is the thing. I wish you could put music in comics. I wish that you could, I think music just can help tell a story so well and it's just a really like basic not basic tool but i don't know how to like it's a, it's a really it's like a cheat code you know what i mean it's like a cheat uh, if you watch a movie with no sound it's like you lose so much right um obviously in comics like there are things that movies can't do uh and there are tricks that you can that you can use but anyway uh, the whole the whole kind of like the the color thing i mean i started with billy because obviously one of my main characters in, in billy was a musician and i needed a way to kind of express music uh, and I kind of settled on the purple and yellow spirals and stuff because it had this kind of fluidity to it that I just, um, it's the best way I could think of visualizing music. I don't like when they'll do, when like comics do the, like the notes and stuff, like the written, written out music. Uh, I don't think it works. Um, cause that's not how I visualize i don't know it's like it's such a subjective thing like how do you visualize something you can't see it's obviously super super subjective um but yeah i i yeah i'm just still figuring that out though like that's that's difficult <laughs> the book implies that creating art is a selfish act could you elaborate i think in my case creating art is a selfish act because well no i don't i i think that it slowly came from a place of that I needed to do it. Is it selfish? I, maybe not. I think it's possibly the wrong word. Um, egocentric, for sure. Uh, selfish, maybe not, you know? Um, I think that, like, I am very much an artist who likes to make stuff for herself. And so, yeah, that's that's where that came from. Can I elaborate further? I don't know. I think that... Um, Art is so personal to, to each person, you know, that, that creates. All artists are some level of, of egocentric and, and selfish, I think. And um, art is self, right? Uh -huh. Philo philosophy, hi. <laughs> Who do you pick in Mario Kart? Yoshi, obviously. 
do you still do you still agree with the ending i the ending to me i reread it if i feel bad because i i genu genuinely do believe what i said those last few pages the really cheesy ones that were all like come by our i do fully believe sometimes i forget but when i get into a state it's like a self-reminder uh, do I still agree with it? So yeah, ab absolutely. It's really helpful. Anyway, I didn't answer them all, but some of them were like uh, more about like process and about uh, getting published, which I have a video that I made a few years ago that you should go watch because I think that included more about that kind of stuff. But also, I do need to update it. So you know, if you have like any more questions that I didn't answer in the previous video, oh my god, my ears look really strange. Sorry, sorry about that. Let me. We have. <laughs> If you have any more questions, uh, leave them in the comments below and I will make an update to my previous Q&A video that won't just be about It's Lonely and will be about other things like the comic industry and, you know, art process and, uh, you know, all that fun stuff. I didn't drink, like, any of my coffee and that's your fault. It's on you. Ugh. Get out of here. Love you. Mwah.